<clears throat> making sure that we're live before I actually say welcome to everyone. And I'm live. All right, welcome, one and everyone, to this week's episode of Scotch and Smoke Rings, episode 306. I am your neighborhood friendly Oxhorn, here as always, with my suspender set to maximum stun. Got a great show for you all today. Hope you're thrilled. Hope you're ready. Hope you are feeling fantastic, because I am. Um... Madman Max 21 says only one hour and four minutes late, Sir Oxhorn. My clock says it's 7.04. So I would be four minutes late, not one hour and four minutes late. Just, you know, numbers, adding, math. It's tricky, I know, but hey, such is life. But I'm here, and that's what's important. Sorry for being late. I was, I admit, a little bit late it's because I got distracted. It wasn't because I had some other pressing obligation, no. Because I was online shopping for sandals. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm shopping for sandals. Ugh. Sandals. I just don't even know what's happening to me. I'm turning old. Here I am in the prime of life, and what am I doing? Shopping for sandals. All right, uh, look, we've got cigars. That's what's important right now. Uh, check this out. So I, I got a new shipment of cigars from Cigar Ox. And uh, look at this beauty. Um, it's, I have to cut it from both sides. Look at that. So that is the part I'm supposed to put in my mouth. And then that's the foot that I'm supposed to cut and light. But both of them are completely closed. <laughs> Uh, it's the first cigar that I have found like this. Hold on a second. Mad Mad Max 21 raises a valid point. He says, his on, on his Facebook, he said, I quote, the show, show starts in one hour, which last week's episode, or watch last week's episode while you wait, and that was two hours ago. Okay, my bad. So I said that the show would start in an hour, two hours ago, and I, 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 I misspoke. The show started at the regularly scheduled time today. The only difference is that I'm, I said it would start an hour earlier, which I suppose is pretty bad. So, sorry. Let's light this thing on fire. This is a Romeo y Julieta Medals de Oro 1875. It's a torpedo shape. And I love torpedo-shaped cigars. I really, really do. The trick with torpedo-shaped cigars is that they sometimes tend to want to unravel. Gentleman Badger says, sandals and smoke rings? Maybe. Maybe. All right. Uh, let's see how I want to do this because I don't want to take too much off. As you can see, the cap, you see that little flap of uh, leaf right there? The cap is really close to the butt of the, uh, the foot of the cigar, or the end of the cigar, the part I put in my mouth. And so I don't want to get too far in there because then it'll start unraveling. So I'm going to... Wow. Oh, yeah, that's definitely not enough. Let's try again. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's... All right, now let's light the end here. Singe off a little bit of that cap to release the wonder that is within. Oh my goodness, this is a weird cigar. 
I'm having a hard time here. I mean, do I snip both ends or what? How does this work? I don't want to have to snip this end because this is a little dull and it did crack it a little bit there, but not too bad. But you know what, I'm just gonna have to do it. So here we go, let's try it. Let's use our V cut. Check that out. That's bizarre. That's going to be a first for me. And that's not working. All right, I'm going to stop trying to be creative and fancy here, and I'm just going to try and cut the blasted thing open. Okay, take five. We're toasting the foot of the cigar, going around the outside edges, making sure it's black on the inside. Then, You know, cigar makers have perfected cigar making technology for quite some time now. So at first I was pretty excited to see a cigar trying something different, but it led to a fairly awkward lighting process, as you saw. <laughs> so maybe we'll just stick with the traditional way cigars are made. No need to sort of glue over the uh, foot of a cigar to add to the confusion. Fedoro Gregoro says that cigar must be crafted by the Iron Horde. Its bond is iron, its will unbreakable. Quite possibly. Various Peanut Pickles says in the best um, South Park voice imaginable, Yeah, smoking is bad for your lungs, okay? O oh, ye of lack of cigar smoking knowledge. Someone can correct him on why lungs are actually the improper organ to be worried about when it comes to cigar smoking. You should be worried about your tongue. Okay. Fan art. We've got some fan art today, ladies and gentlemen. You guys have been intrepid. Oh. Yes. Please lock me in. Come on. Thank you. I need access to my Facebooking machine. <laughs> Andy the DK says, good to see you. Ox, my friend, good to see you as well. Andy the DK. Gentleman Badger's in the house and says, hope you're doing well tonight. Um, oh, Andy, he's talking to someone else, not me. That's okay. I don't have to be the center of attention. No, it's fine. Madman Max says, Oxhorn, you're scotch. He's right. Scotch. Okay. But have I no vessel to pour it into? I do. Yet it's filled with water. What should I do? Oh, wait. No, I have another one. And yet it's a little dirty. With a bug in it. All right, let's wash it.
That's okay. If it tastes a little bit like mosquito, it'll be all right because mosquitoes are filled with protein and the blood of other mammals. So, you know, it's just a win-win situation. Okay. Bingo, look at that. Today we are drinking some Ballantine's finest blended scotch whiskey. It's my new favorite. I, for the longest time, tried Scoresby, and Scoresby is magnificent. But I wanted to try something new, and I did, and I, I loved it almost as much, if not more. And so we're, we're drinking Scoresby today. Various peanut pickle says, Alcohol is bad for you, okay? I want somebody to link to an article that says how breathing oxygen can cause cancer, please. That's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna vindicate my entire existence tonight. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen, bottoms up. <laughs> that was a proboscis. <laughs> Gulbreth says, is your stomach not a vessel? Touché, my friend. Great point. Indeed it is. Lane, look at that. The Jigglypuff found one and says, he links to an article that says the air we breathe causes cancer. <laughs> let's, let's add to that that drinking water, drinking too much water causes cancer. <laughs> Wearing cotton causes cancer. <laughs> Not bathing frequently enough causes cancer. That's right. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's so great. You can find l literally almost any reason possible for the causation of cancer. Too much chocolate causes cancer. Too much chocolate cures cancer. Red wine causes cancer. No, red wine cures cancer. I mean, to be fair, yes, it is proven that tobacco causes cancer. Okay, yes, it does. It does. That's very true. I'm not going to deny that. But my point is that it is possible to smoke cigars in a moderate way and a responsible way to minimize your cancer risk. Not eliminate it, not eliminate it, but minimize it. Fedoro Gregoro says, don't laugh, your chances of cancer just increased a thousandfold. Oh man, I just caught laughing cancer. Oh. <laughs> uh, all right, what were we doing before I got distracted? Oh yeah, we were talking about uh, fan art. But wait, no, I forgot to, I forgot to tell the whole world that I'm streaming live. All right, how do you how do you type with the Twitter machine? All right, streaming live episode three oh six of Scotch and Smoke Rings. Topic: Laughing causes cancer. Of course, anyone who reads this and comes to the show late, they're not going to get the joke because. That event has already passed. All right, there we go. Now the world knows that we're streaming. Look at that! Ar Argonon Bob is watching Scotch and Smoke Rings from his live, from his big screen TV today, because he found a way to get Twitch to work on his uh, gaming machine or, or, or something like that, or your DVD player. Well, congratulations to you, good sir. This is great. You're sitting in your living room, drinking a classy beverage, or doing whatever you're doing, and here I am in your living room on your big screen TV. 
Look at me in high definition and bask in the glory of my beard. No, nicely done, good sir. Nicely done. All right, fan art. Where are we? Um, oh, that's one thing I did want to show off. If I can find my post. Okay, here we go. Let me show you my screen. If I can get it up there. Nope, come on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's the fan art for the week. But first, I gotta tell you this story. So, this weekend, we celebrated the birthday parties for my young boy, Gavin, my daughter, Gwendolyn, and my wife, Jody. My, my, my son and my wife have the exact same birthday, and my daughter was born one day before. So that's three birthdays in the Oxhorn family on one weekend. And we had a big birthday party, and, you know, Jody spent a lot of time getting cakes and presents and stuff for the kids, and I wanted to get her something. So I went to the local Safeway store, and... And I, and I ordered her a special little birthday cake. And let me read to you what I, exactly what I, what I told them. Because this is the result. And as you can see, it's a little confusing. But this is what happened. The cake lady asked me what I wanted on the cake. The cake was small, so I chose a few words. And I chose Jody with the number two and a question mark by it. Because I kind of wanted it to be like Jody 20-something. You know, you can't really tell her age, but it's 20 question mark, 20 something. So Jody, two, two question mark. And then she said, can you spell that for me? And I'm like, all right, J-O-D-I two question mark. Then she wanted to know what I wanted in terms of a theme for the cake. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, she's got a paint theme going on. So let's make this cake have some little cans of paint on top with maybe some paint dripping down the sides of it. All right. So then I show up four days later and this is the cake I get. It says, Jody, two question mark, paint. <laughs> I, ne I never said I wanted them to spell out the word paint on the cake. I said I wanted the theme of the cake to be paint. And they not only got two question mark wrong, but it's the wrong two. Oh, I mean, they could have at least spelled out T-W-O. But no, it's not even the number. It's two question mark. But here's what makes it even worse. At the very end, when I pick it up the cake, I didn't want to argue with her about it. I just wanted to pick it up because I was late for the party. The cake decorator comes to me and, sa and she's, she says, so about your cake, is it a code? <laughs> no, no dear, it's not a code. It's far worse than that. <laughs> it's far, far worse than that. So there you go. This was the birthday cake for my, my poor wife. She had to suffer through this, but she was a great sport about it. And then, uh, in response to the cake that I posted, Matt Ezel had to share this with the rest of us. Uh, this isn't mine or anything, but somebody had a bad day. You had one job. Happy birthday on both. Happy birthday on both. One job. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty bad one. I have to say that that tops the, the epic encounter that I had. Oh, now this is pretty great. Damon LaRue decided to create some Hearthstone cards for us. And he says, today marks the ninth anniversary of the Great Kodo, way back in 2006. So I, I decided to try my hand at making some Oxhorn inspired Hearthstone cards. And so here we go, here's the first one. Brandon M. Dennis, Battle Cry, summon a 4-3 Oxhorn with Charge, or summon a 3-4 Staghorn with Taunt. And here's the Staghorn with Taunt. And of course, as you can see, there's a Pecan Pie up in there. And then here's the 4-3 Oxhorn with Charge. It's pretty well done. All right, I gotta say, well done. And I like how I'm a legendary card here, so. Thank you for that one, Damon LaRue, very creative. And then there's this, I, I wanted to talk about it, just be, but I can't show it off because it's a video. But uh, but it's a great video about the secret to growing a long beard. And it's it's pretty short, it's only a minute long, but it's hilarious. So if you're a fan of our YouTube, or, I'm sorry, our Facebook page, which is just facebook.com slash groups slash Oxhorn, you can see it on there. It was really funny, I encourage you to check it out. 
And then there's this from Matt Ezel, and it's an article on Cigar Aficionado, one of my uh, my favorite knowledge bases for cigars. And he's, it's an article on, is it all right for cigars to co-mingle in my humidor? And this actually goes back to a topic that I addressed in another video on my YouTube channel. So it's going to be great reading for you if you're just curious about cigars. Um, and it, that, it actually coincides with what I, what I said in my video. Cigar purists are going to say, no, cigars can't mingle. But conventional wisdom and everyday necessity says, yeah, it's okay to put cigars of different brands into the same humidor. So thank you for that one, Matthew. Very nicely done. And then we've got a, a question from Richard. And he says, Oxhorn, I've got a question. Do Oxhorn and the gang have last names? If so, might I find out what they are so I can use their full names in the story? And uh, the answer to that is no, they do not have last names. They are known simply as Oxhorn, Staghorn, and Mortus. Funny story, I actually worked with a guy uh, a couple years ago, long after I made my Oxhorn series, and his name was Duncan. And that's it. That, it. that was his name. It was Duncan. He had it legally changed from his surname, given name, middle name, and all of that to just Duncan. Funny thing is, too, he looked like Duncan McLeod from the Highlander series. He had long, straight black hair. He was into anime culture and stuff like that, katanas and all of that, into video games, he worked for a video game company, and his name was Duncan. And he told me all of these funny stories about him just trying to live his life. You know, if you go to get your driver's license, right, they ask for your first and last name. And his legal name is just Duncan, right? So they say, what's your first name, Duncan? And then they say, what's your last name? He says, no, 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 it's just Duncan. So oftentimes it comes out as Duncan Duncan, or Duncan D. Duncan. <laughs> And he's like, no, please. My name is just Duncan. It is not Duncan D. Duncan. It's Duncan. And the poor guy. I mean, he's bringing it on himself, right? Because he's the one that decided to make his uh, his name so complex. Uh, but hey, you know, th things like this are not that hard. You should be able to listen to a person explain to you the situation and go, oh, yeah, one name. Got it. Duncan. But no. Said you get Duncan Duncan or Duncan D. Duncan. Heir to the Dunconian Empire of Duncan Dun. Uh, all right, uh, then we got some more fan art. Let's check this out. Damon LaRue says, Looks like Hearthstone will be rolling out some new character skins. Oxhorn, can we expect to soon see some new faces on the field of battle? I've got my fingers crossed for Kael'thas, or Kael'thas as an alternate warlock hero. Uh, yeah, that would be pretty cool. I, I'm not going to uh, go to the article because we've all read it, but... That would be amazing. And then here's a great video. Again, I can't play it because um, of men with all that, but it, it, more ways to make ox hungry, says Andrew, uh, Andy the DK. And what is it? They're making a bacon taco of mac and cheese. What and what in the, oh my gosh, this, you know you're living in the fall of an empire when they've invented bacon tacos and they fill it with mac and cheese. At that point, you just gotta go, okay, that's it. Our, our empire is now in its waning days. This is the excess of the American empire. <laughs> I'm sure that the Romans, before they fell, the last thing that they invented was the bacon mac and cheese taco. I'm pretty sure that's true. Just check out the, the murals, like the Roman murals and stuff. It's the bacon mac and cheese taco. All right, catching up on your comments. I got, I kind of got lost there at the fan art. You guys did a great job there. Baldock says, news flash, I've got a beard. Congratulations to you, good sir. I also have a beard and I highly recommend it. Once you go beard, you never go bald, chin bald. Child? Dora says, Duncan is too complex for the simpletons at the DMV. Look, that's cruel, but I'm not going to argue. <laughs> I can't actually argue against that point, because that's the reality. 
<laughs> Madman Max Twinwood says Scotch cures cancer. Look. Data be damned. I'll believe it. KD Pnut says, Dear Oxhorn, are there any thoughts about streaming more often? Uh, I've had many thoughts about it, and in the past I have experimented with streaming more often. When I would play a new game, I would have an impromptu stream and stuff like that. Um, but the logistics of it are tricky because I've got a full-time job. I work a regular, you know, five to nine job, or nine to five job, and then I've got a family to care for. It's just, I have no time. I can't, I just can't do it. So I've, I still want to connect with the fans and I still want to have chats and all that. So I've reserved one day a week where I'm going to have an evening that I can give to you guys. Um, and as much as I would love to stream more often, multiple times a week, it's just, a, it's, it's pretty tricky. So I'll probably have more impromptu streams in the future, but for the moment, this is going to be our regularly scheduled program. Uh, Grimmer God says, greetings from Germany. Your Facebook link is broken. Host error every time. Let's check that out. You're telling me that Scotch and Smoke Rings is down? Oh, it's working now. Uh, sorry about that. It might have been just a momentary blurp in my website service. But it's working right now. But thank you for letting me know. Well, I hope that you mean on my Facebook. Scotch and smoke. Oh. Oh wait, no, that works too. All right, sorry. I'm I'm sorry. I can't reproduce your issue, but I'm gonna take a look at it after the show, and we'll uh, we'll see if we can figure it out. Perry, per Perk C82 says, "Do you have a new studio?" Yes, this is my new home. Uh, we moved back in February, and we're really happy here. Uh, now I've actually got a huge garage that I converted into my studio and my office, and the show is better, life is better, everything's better. Cheers and bottoms up. Cigarox says, one more year until the second round of the Terrible Twos with Gwen. Yeah, I am afraid that is uh, very likely to occur. As it is with any child, you do have to go through the terrible twos. And that's okay. That's okay. Okay, uh, so we finished off the fan art. Let's go ahead and take a look at recorded messages. Whoa! We've got quite a few today. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So first on the list is Halp Plox. That's right. It's a fellow named Halp Plox. And he's got a 35 second message for us. So let's hear what he's got to say. What's on your mind, Halp Plox? Sounded juicy. Anything else? Ooh. Oh, oh, also <laughs> juicy. All right, well, obviously there was some sort of medical issue with help plocks, uh, <clears throat> which prevented him from using, oh, I don't know, language. And that's okay, because we're, this is a safe place at Scotch and Smoke Rooms. We do not criticize due to uh, you know, me medical issue or, or anything else. So, you're welcome. All right, next on the uh, show is the marvelous Madman Max. 
What's on your mind, Madman Max? You've got the floor. Greetings, Oxone. It's the Marvel's Madman Max here. Today we have two... Well, I've got two questions for you. Have you been keeping up with the story? And have you, what, what are your opinions on it? And the Nooker. Is it a type of water dragon, elf, or is it a goblin? You know the rules. Three choices. Pick one. I'll link in the... Uh, the chat and I hope you enjoy your scotch and have a wonderful evening. I'm gonna go with goblin. Knocker just sounds like a goblin-ish thing, right? So that's gonna be my guess. As for your story, I encourage creativity here at Scotch and Smoke Rings. So I applaud you in your efforts. Continue to share your story with the masses and uh, I hope you have many happy readers. Next up is Gentleman Badger, you are... Oh, man, I was wrong. Madman Max says, Knocker is a dialect word for a kind of water dragon living in knocker holes in Sussex, England. The word comes from the Old English Nikor, which means water monster, and is used in the poem Beowulf. Oh, I remember reading Beowulf. I really enjoyed it. But I don't remember any knockers. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm learning a lot about uh, uh, English legend. Loving it. Thank you very much, Mad Mad Max. Next up, Gentleman Badger, you are on the program. What is on your mind? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and hail, hail, good sir. I had a question tonight about Black Rock Mountain, as I know that Oxhorn recently conquered it. I want to know which boss mechanic you found the most enjoyable of them all. I recently finished Heroic myself, which helps me appreciate the ideas that Blizzard put into this adventure. I mean, there's a lot of unique boss ideas. And considering that a lot of these mechanics are going to be reused for the upcoming Tavern Brawl feature, I'm sure Blizzard would like to get the community's feedback on which mechanics they found most enjoyable. And I want to get your feedback, good sir, and see which one you enjoyed the most. So thank you, and stay classy, everybody. Great question. So he's right. I have uh, I spent a lot of time working on the, uh, the Black Rock Mountain expansion, which was a gift from Damon LaRue. So again, thank you very much, Damon LaRue. And I got most of the cards, but the problem is that I didn't finish it. I cannot beat that final dragon. Is it Nefarian? Is that what it's called? I've tried multiple different times with many different decks. Uh, I just, well, I don't have the next Ramus. I never finished the, I never bought the next Ramus instance, so I don't have Kelfulas. Well, and apparently, Kelfulas is an essential card for defeating this final boss in Black Rock Mountain because he kills so many of your minions that you need to be able to resurrect your minions at the end of every turn, and that's the only minion, that's the only a minion that, that allows you to do that. So I've tried and tried and tried, and I just cannot defeat Nefarian. But I did everything else, and I, um... Kelf Kelfalos, is that? Kelfizad, that's what I meant. I did mean Kelfizad. Thank you, Greg Hartung. Yeah, thanks for pointing it out, Gentleman Badger. And I didn't mean Kelfalos. Kelfizad. Um, but uh, I think one of my favorite encounters was the Molten... Elemental, the Molten Core Elemental, where he starts and there are those other Molten Giants that uh, once once they reach 5 health or something like that, they explode and you get hit for the amount of damage added on top of each other. So for example, if there are 6 molten, molten mini Molten Giants on the map and they all explode at once, that's 6 times 6 damage that you get. That's an instant death. However, if you kill one at a time, then only one dies, and uh, it only does one damage to you times one. So you have an incentive to um, kill one every single turn, and it, it, it took a lot of uh, work to, to try and, and get that to, to work correctly for me, but it was fun. So I, that would probably be my answer to your question. That was one of my favorites. All right. Um, <clears throat> Andy the DK says, lol, you don't have a Blood Elf land card? Yeah, exactly. Peace Monk says, can't go wrong with calling it KT. Good point. I'll go ahead and do that from now on. Imagine Justin says, greetings, good sir Oxhorn. Sorry, I'm very late for the show. I was actually doing an event on World of Warcraft and didn't know that it was Thursday. I apologize and I raise my glass to you, good sir. 
Cheers, my friend. Thank you very much for coming by. Next on the list is Greg Hartung. Greg Hartung, my friend, you're on the program. What would you like to hear? Good evening, Noxhorn. It is I, Fedora Gregoro, formerly known as McLovin. <laughs> Recently, my trusty old computer has suffered a complete breakdown. This wasn't a complete surprise, given it was over six years old and still ran on Windows XP. When I got a new one, the performance was greatly enhanced, particularly with Heroes of the Storm, a game in which you have tried and failed to participate with us fans. My question for you is, how old is your computer? If old, and in the case it too might break down, might I recommend a Lenovo desktop with a NVIDIA GeForce graphics card? I'm aware this may be out of your budget with you having kids and all, but trust me, it too could be a well worth improvement. Have a swell evening. Thank you very much, Greg Hartung. And as you know, my old laptop, which uh, I did the show on for many different years, <clears throat> was pretty slow and sluggish and outdated by the time I replaced it. But when I moved into my new, ho my new house, the one I'm in now, I did get a new computer. And it wasn't a brand new off-the-shelf model, but it was a $900 pre-built, highly rated gaming computer that I got on Amazon. And uh, it has been a wonder. It has been an absolute dream. We get no more lag on this show, no more out of sync audio. We can actually play games and they don't lag down. It's, it's been pretty great. So I'm pretty happy with what I ended up getting. It was reasonably priced. It's gonna last me for four to five years. Uh, I'm pretty thrilled. And I, I do want to, uh, to hop in here just Gord says, looking skinny, Brandon. Why, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm working on it, especially in the beard area. I'm trying to you know, narrow it down. And No, thanks very much. I do appreciate it. And good to see you in the, in the chat today, Gord. Um, we always love it when you stop by. Anyway, uh, I do want to take a moment to, to say rest in peace to Christopher Lee. For those of you who don't know, Christopher Lee died today. He's the actor who played Sorrow Man in Lord of the Rings and also... Count Dooku, I believe his name is, in Star Wars. He uh, was 93 years old, and one of the things that the, the obituary I read on him said is that he always said that he wanted to die with his boots on. And true to form, he was in the middle of getting ready to film a new movie when he, he suddenly had an unexpected uh, heart condition and, and ended up dying. So he was active in his old age. He had, he had, his career spanned decades, and uh, he was an excellent actor with lots of lots of wonderful works that are incredibly memorable. So, uh, not that actors all deserve recognition and everything like that, but. We take them into our homes, we let them speak to us, we do get to know them a little bit, and so it's always sad to see to see a personality go. So, um, rest in peace, Christopher Lee. Many fond memories. Dora says that he released a metal album. Really? I like him even more now. I'm going to have to go Google those. I didn't realize that. Christopher Lee released a metal album. Why am I not surprised, strangely enough? Uh, Jepson Persona says, I love that you have a stream, man. So much love for your old school WoW machinima from this guy. Had a lot of laughs from you over the years. Cheers. Cheers to and rest in peace, Mr. Lee. Indeed. Rest in peace, Mr. Lee. And thank you very much for stopping by. I'm, uh, I really appreciate it whenever the fans can tell me how much they like the old movies. So thank you very much. That's right, Ulfer17 says that he met Tolkien in person. That's right, he did. I remember reading that trivia point, that uh, he was the only person who made the movies that actually met the author in person, which is pretty cool, right? Madman Max says, I propose we raise our glasses of scotch to drink to his honor. Indeed, cheers to the memory of Christopher Lee. I hope you're in a better place. All right, next on the program is Andy the DK. Good sir, what is on your mind? And now, ladies and gentlemen, coming to you live from Stormwind City, it's Quickfire Questions. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's your host with the most, here's Zendy the DK. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to everyone's favorite Scotch and Smoke Rings Thursday night, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time segment. It's Quickfire Questions. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the game we like to call Quickfire Questions, where I, Andy the DK, quiz our amazingly classy bearded beardsman host Oxhorn about some Warcraft or Hearthstone lore yes, or indeed. gameplay or anything like that. So anyways folks let's get right into it. Ox how you doing tonight? Hope you're ready for some quick fire questions because here we go. Tonight's topic is what's new in Hearthstone? Ox question number one can you name the new game mode that's coming out in the next patch for Hearthstone? Tavern Brawl. Question number two can you name the two new heroes that are making an appearance to replace the old heroes if the Hearthstone player wishes to buy them in the store? Imagine Can you name the two heroes? And question number three. And, uh, Out of all the cards in Hearthstone, including else. Goblins vs. Gnomes and Black Rock Mountain, how many beast cards are there? Thank you, Ox, for answering, and thank you, everyone, for playing. Until next time, this is Andy the DK signing off. Remember to get your Murloc spade. How many grains of sand are there in your average beach? I mean, well, how am I supposed to answer that question? How many beast cards are there? What? I, that's, that's ridiculous. Like, how many keys are on a keyboard? Nah, nah, I'm not answering that. I'm sorry. That's not even right. That's not fair. I'm sure you have the answer, though. So, I have no idea. Maths is not my strong suit. Gorn says that in Christopher Lee's old age, a band solicited him to sing some vocals for their metal album. He did it on a whim. I think he was in his 70s at the time. That's pretty cool. They also said that he was the inspiration for James Bond. He was a spy during World War II. Had no idea. That's even more excellent. Okay, uh... Looks like we have a few more questions left, and then we can move on to Hearthstone. Next up on the program is Jonath. You are on the program today, good sir. What's on your mind? Good evening, Mr. Oxhorn. This is Jonath. How are you doing tonight, my fellow beardsmen? Doing well. I have a single question for tonight, so I will get straight to it. After rereading your primer on dress shirt, I noticed that there was only a note on color. My question is this. What are your thoughts on stripe, both vertical and horizontal, versus flat, versus solid color? Thank you for your time tonight, good sir. I look forward, as always, to tonight's show. Stay class. Great question. So he's asking about my primer on dress shirts, which you can find at scotchandsmokerings.com. Um, I talked a little bit about patterns and color, but I didn't dive too deeply into it. And he wanted my opinion on vertical stripes versus horizontal stripes and solid colors and so forth. And so I'll briefly go over a few things when it comes to color and style that, uh, and, and pattern that I think are important when choosing uh, uh, a wardrobe of dress shirts for your everyday needs. Um, the first is that anything that stands out as being vivid and bright and really obnoxious is just that. It's obnoxious, it's unclassy, we don't want to go that way. There are guys who will have neon shirts and, you know, colors that kind of clash, but they don't really, and they just stand out, and you've got orange shoes on, and, you know, that kind of that kind of color, in my opinion, is not quite suitable for the refined gentleman that you and I want to be. Um, that said, there are a near endless number of, co of colors and color combinations that work really well. My advice for a dress shirt is, is if you are going to get a shirt with multiple colors, Make sure that the primary color is a muted, non-vivid, non-bright color, and that the only other color that you use in the shirt is used in an accent in a very faint way, like as some uh, vertical stripes or, or a very faint herringbone pattern or something like that. Ideally, the, the ideal shirts uh, that, that I like best are gonna be shirts where uh, they are only one color and the weave of the cloth is what gives the shirt the pattern. This, for example, is a seersucker shirt, and it's made from thread from a, from a cloth that's only one color. And yet it kind of looks like there are some dark stripes going down, but that's actually not the case. The reason it looks that way is they've used a heavier weave of thread 
to do the, the vertical stripes, which makes it look a little darker because it's a little bit more dense. And they also, the nice thing about Seersucker is it's kind of got this puckered appearance, which adds to the soft look of it and so on and so forth. Um, so if you're wanting to experiment with different looks, I would focus on cloth type. Um, rather than just crazy patterns. And then, if you find a cloth type that you want and you want to go even further by finding a pattern, um, don't go too terribly crazy when it comes to other colors. Find one primary color for the shirt and then maybe get another color that's got a stripe on it or something. Now, as for plaid, plaid, plaid breaks the rules of that a little bit. I do think that too many people are wearing plaid these days. Or, if not that, people have too many plaid-colored items of clothing in their wardrobe. Plaid, I think, is a great addition for an, an outdoors shirt or something that's uh, uh, that's a piece of sportswear. But have one shirt that's plaid, you know, not not three or four different shirts that are plaid. Um, that would be my suggestion. And the DK answers his own question. It says, "By the way, there are 22 beast cards all together." All right. Well, thank you very much for that one. Now I know. Uh, knowing was half the battle, apparently. Grimager Gott says, please check your Facebook mails. I sent you a, a non-Kelthuzad deck to win. Thank you very much. After the show, I'll go ahead and check that out and see if I can get it to work. You, you have to know, however, that I don't have a lot of legendaries. I've only got a few. So if it's legendary heavy, as are all the decks that I've found online to beat Nefarian, um, I, I probably still probably won't be able to use it. Um, but thank you. I'll check out my Facebook comments and then try that later. Jepson Persona has some more uh, comments on shirt quality that are great. He says, regarding Seersucker, it's also much better in the summer. The extra volume uh, gives you more air circulation between shirt and skin. Yes, that's very true. One of the reasons I'm wearing a Seersucker shirt today is because the temperature in Seattle has been ridiculous. It even reached the 80s over the weekend, and it's been firmly in the uh, 70s to, to high 60s throughout the week. Uh, and we've all been suffering, so... Uh, Seer Sucker's the way to go, my friend. All right, we've got one more message from Andy the DK. Uh, again, Andy, what's on your mind today, good sir? Hello, once again, Oxhorn. It is I... Hello, once again, Oxhorn. It is I, Andy the DK. How are you doing, my friend? Hope you're doing well. Very well. Um, no quickfire questions uh, on this message. On the other one, I did it. Um, but anyways, that is not the topic. The topic, Ox, is I just wanted to discuss with you real quick, is um, taking care of your hygiene, like dental hygiene and things like that. Um, like, how often do you go to the dentist and do you... Uh, do you tell them because i know that dentists hate to hear this but do you tell them about like you know i smoke cigars and then everyone in the dentist's office gasps oh, he smokes cigars and you know but i always tell them that just so they check my tongue and all that kind of stuff and also hygiene after you smoke a cigar do you brush your teeth and use mouthwash right away or do you wait for a while because if there's one thing that i don't like about cigars it's it's the aftertaste, that kind of musty taste on your gums that, that the cigar smoke leaves after a while. And I always like to I always like to use mouthwash and brush my teeth and all that. Um, but yeah, how, how, what would you recommend for all the new cigar smokers out there? How to best uh, take care of dental hygiene and all that kind of stuff? Thanks, Ox, and I'll see you later, buddy. Take Excellent care. question. I'm so glad you asked that. Um... I should really do a video for YouTube about this particular topic, but you're absolutely right. After you smoke a cigar, for those who don't know, after you smoke a cigar, um, it leaves a, a very faint acid in your mouth. And if you don't brush your teeth afterwards, you, and if you go to bed, for example, and if you wake up the next morning, your your mouth can feel a little tinny. It can even feel a, like, like there's a stinging sensation, a slight stinging sensation, and, and that's not very pleasant. Um, you can prevent that, or, or at least reduce the severity of that by smoking your cigar slowly. 
Usually that acid really only builds up if you're smoking it too fast or if you have a really wet cigar where you tend to build up more of that acid. But even if you're smoking just casually and you're smoking it right, you can get a little bit of that acid build up in your mouth. So what I do is I don't brush right after I smoke a cigar, but at the end of my day when I'm getting ready for bed, I tend to brush my teeth and floss and use the mouthwash and then I'm good. And I can sleep through the night, I wake up the next morning and there's absolutely no side effects at all. I go to the dentist about uh, twice a year, once every six months, as they tend to recommend, primarily, primarily for a tooth cleaning. Now, I have been blessed, genetically, by never getting cavities. I had cavities when I was a kid, but past the age of nine, I have never had a cavity, and I think it's partially due to my dental hygiene and partially just due to my family's genetics, because none of the men in my family ever get cavities. I've never had tooth decay, and even when I haven't taken great care of my teeth and gums, I'll go to the dentist and they'll look at them and say, your gums look completely fine, you know, there's no, there's no sign of bleeding gums or anything like that. Um, that said, whenever I go to the dentist, I do tell them, uh, look, I smoke cigars, and I want you to make sure that my gum line isn't receding, that I'm not eating away at the enamel of my teeth. And they do, and every single time it ends up coming back okay. So I've no longer, I've stopped worrying really about the effect of cigars on my teeth. They're not discoloring them. They're not eating away at the enamel. I've had that checked. My gum line is completely fine. Um, really the only issue is that sometimes that acidy feeling does happen and brushing cures it. So just uh, that, and that goes back to, to my original point that when it comes to cigar smoking, there are things that you can do, just very basic things, to minimize your risk of having your health negatively impacted. I'm not gonna be one who sits here and says that smoking cigars are safe, or that you'll never get cancer if you decide to take up the hobby. I'll never say that. But I will say that if you maintain oral hygiene, and if you smoke in moderation, and if you drink a tall glass of cold water, and if you, you, you don't smoke it too fast, and all these little things that you can do during your enjoyment of a cigar, that you can reduce the risk that you'll have to having complications like that. That's all I'll say. Okay, well, great questions this week. Lots of fan art. We've been going for an hour and we haven't even cracked open Hearthstone yet, uh, which is pretty exciting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack open Hearthstone. Oh, and Fancy Badger is here ready for me. Hopefully, uh... all right, and I have to warn you all, I do have some new cards. Now that I've completed almost all of the bosses in Black Rock Mountain, I've got some new cards, and some of them are pretty nice. So, I am even more of a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> Thrall versus Gul'dan! Your soul shall be mine for Doomhammer. Wow, bad draw. Fancy Badger, pleasure to meet you on the field of battle, good sir. Let's do this thing. Man, I'm not getting lucky with this draw today. I greet you. Greetings, friend. Why do you call? game sounds a bit loud. All right, let me turn it down. I can ease your pain. There, how's that? You've got your bases done, that's for sure. Z 
Z Napping says, hello friend, love the music, very creative channel. Why thank you, good sir, I do appreciate it. Whoa, that's a lot of imps. There, try that on for size. Greg Hardung says, now that you've got a proper computer, might you attempt to join us in a Heroes of the Storm game? We can verse against AI so that you can practice. Uh, tempting, tempting, I may do that. I may at some point do that. Interesting battle. Elements guide me. 
elements guide me. About time I got a taunt from that thing, goodness. Tom108 says, was them inventing swear words on YouTube successful? Well, you know, depending on how you measure success. Trevor Green is in the chat and says, good to see you, Ox. Good to see you, Trevor Green. Golly. None of my crowd control cards are coming this turn. strategy for the next one. Alright, who's next? little hardcore kitten says you can do it no you can't do it I didn't believe hard enough I'm sorry <laughs> it's totally your fault my friend I'm blaming you Rick Hartung says if you got the overwatch beta access would you try it out with us who may or may not get the golden ticket too or is that more up Nova's alley I would definitely uh Try it out with you guys. I haven't gotten any beta in well invite met. for that, but yeah, absolutely. Baldock says, and the losing streak continues. Yeah, we'll see. When I do the arena, and when I do a, a ranked challenge, I do very well. This, I, th you guys are just good. That's, that's all. You guys are just good. Ha! <laughs> 
All for 17 says, or you're just using junk decks to be nice to your fans. Yes! You caught me. That's it. I just use junk decks when I fight you guys. No, I'm really much better than this, but I just didn't want to show off. Yeah, that's totally what was... Uh... <laughs> that's how it works. I know. This Grim Guzzler guy is uh, pretty tricky. Elizabeth says, falling asleep because I've been painting the new house all week. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks for coming, Elizabeth. Gentleman Badger says, any opinions on the new Lava Shock card? Is it good, sir? Yeah, I like it. I haven't quite figured out how I want to use it in my deck yet, but I do like it, yeah. Okay, well done. Rubbish. Reporting for duty.
Открыт планет. Открыт планет. Yeah, I know, I know, that's what I should have done. Wasn't thinking, wasn't thinking. Reporting for duty. I let it go. Arms, men. Oh! So that's that, huh? I know I did. No need to rub it in. See, this is just this is just going back to that me me being easy on you guys. So yeah, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Totally intentional. But then of course I can't actually say that because then I'd be giving away the So I don't know. You guys would just have to figure out for yourselves whether or not I really am this inept at playing Hearthstone. Hearthstone. Next up! Monsieur Le Gregoro Fedoro. That's what I should have done, KD Pnut. Alas and Ver. Scotch cures all ales. Cheers. For Doomhammer. Victory or death. Vlad in HS says, Oxhorn, what's your battle tag? It's number 1649. <laughs> That's true, Andy the DK. Very well played.
Okay. I shouldn't have done that. Oh. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. Stop moving! Job done. Last you and your gnomes. Online. Oh my goodness! Go, blimey! Where are my crowd control cards when I need them? Oh, oh, oh! The pain! Oh, finally. Luck be a lady! Thank you. More losses up my sleeve if you guys want to go for it. <laughs> so the secret to this warrior deck is that I kept one of the um, one of the decks that I googled when trying to use my warrior to fight one of the bosses in Black Rock Mountain. And uh, it performed so well that I decided to keep it. And then I went ahead and took this deck into ranked play. And I am I won five games in a row in ranked play. And I'm like, all right, this is a great deck. I'm going to use it during my show. You guys are above average at this game. Just so you know, I'm really not this bad usually. You guys are above average at this game. So take that as flattery or whatever you want, but it's true. <laughs> 
Sensana asks, tell me about your Dragon Con experience, Oxhorn. While I have been to a few conventions, I've been to Dragon Con twice and BlizzCon like five different times. And they've all been uh, a lot of fun. The difference for me is that when I go, I tend to get recognized. So it's a little bit different for me going to conventions. Um, I tend to give talks or walk around talking with the fans, but no, you jerk. Uh, but they're always a blast. The after parties are, are, are always the most fun. So if you can find a good after party to go to, that, that would be my suggestion. Sensana84 says, I volunteered at this convention for the first time this year. It's a sa it is sad that the volunteer head was telling me about a story that had been passed down for a few years. The person in said story was me, and he didn't even realize it. I have infamy. Well, that's okay. We all have to have something, and sometimes infamy is okay. Let's try that on for size. Well done. I do have the Stop. New. Oh, 
Shall not pass. Hmm. Where shall I strike? <laughs> oh, oh. Lucky dog. Alright. Well done. Well done. Hey, at least I leveled up. I have that constellation. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's the end of the program. We're going to end on a high note with a smoke ship. Ladies and gentlemen, what is on your minds? As we tend to do at the end of every program, I blow into existence a smoke ship of your creation. What would you like to see today? Well played, Imagine Justin. Well played. Madman Max says, My smoke ship is a skyship as the masts are filled with the air of a brand new day. Oxhorn stands on the bow dressed and a white silk shirt and a staghorn is feasting upon a pecan pie until they are attacked from the side as our heroes look over the side and jump onto the attacking ship as they land ox and staghorn are quickly surrounded by the ghosts of demon murlocs as our heroes ready up to fight the murlocs present a humidor of the finest cigars and a cask of 50 year old scotch as our heroes reboard their ship they share out uh, the they share out the a pint of the scotch to the Murlocs and enjoy a party with gnome bacon and night elf sausage mixed with a little bit of golem, goblin rum to take out the hippie taste. Now is that bacon that is made by gnomes or bacon that is made of gnomes? And the same for sausage. There are certain implications there. Chief Smash says staghorn and oxhorn bacon socks on a ship called the Fox Witch they built out of blocks to sail scotch locks. And as the ship leaves the docks, <coughs> they stand on a box and shout, Elves are the pox. <coughs> Excuse me. We shall dash them on rocks, shave their mohawks, cook their ears in some woks, and feed them to crocs. What, the shoes? You gonna feed them to some rubbery slipper shoes? Okay, I like it. Black Shwarma says, Oxhorn and Christopher Lee on a golden bowler hat heading off to the sky, enjoying a fine red wax Gita cheese and a delicious French red Chablis. 
That sounds like a classy evening. And delicious. Madman Max says, bacon made of gnome and sausage made from night elf. Okay, well, at least it's not ambiguous. We are devouring night elves and gnomes here today. <laughs> I love it. Imagine Justin says, Oxhorn eating a plate full of delicious crispy bacon. Short, sweet, beautiful. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wrap this up here. Let's go with Chief Smash, because I don't see many smoke ships from him, and this one rhymes. And I do love a rhyming smoke ship. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Pay close attention. see that for the briefest of moments we had an amazing smoke ship and we had staghorn and ox in bacon socks on a ship called the fox which they built out of blocks to sail scottish locks and as the ship leaves the docks they stand on a box and shout elves are a pox we shall dash them on rocks shave their mohawks cook their ears in some woks, and feed them to crocs Thank you for that one. It's It takes a lot out of me to produce such masterpieces, but they're worth it. They're worth it. These go down in ox history as the finest works of art to date. Gentleman Badger says, Classy evening as always. Thank you for keeping the show going, good sir. Good night, Gentleman Bad Badger. Thank you very much for coming. And thanks everyone for coming this week to Scotch and Smoke Rings episode 306 the 306th episode of this fine program. I'm going to head on out, but thanks for sticking with me. Be sure to tune in next week. Same Ox time, same Ox channel here at scotchandsmokedrinks.com. And as always, we say, be sure, my friends, that you all stay classy. Cheers. Cheers.